Hello guys, this is Panzermeister 36 In today's video we are going to be continuing on with our Tiger 1. Specifically today we will be looking at applying some rust effects to the spare tracks on the tank, as well as the rust effects on the exhausts. Now I generally don't put a lot of rust on my own model tanks. Some people like to apply a whole bunch. That's up to them, that's fine, but myself I prefer to keep it a little more toned down. But of course there are still some areas where there should be rust. Spare tracks are often seem to be kind of in pretty bad shape because they're just basically metal that's exposed out there and the exhaust in the back they, they're subjected to a whole bunch of heat which bakes off the paint and exposes them to the weather and they get kind of rusty so that's what we're gonna be looking at today hope you stay tuned and hope you enjoy let's get started later tigers have these big curved exhaust shrouds you can see there which I guess armor the exhausts now, I left them off for painting when I painted the camouflage pattern because I wanted to get paint in there, but then I glued them on for some reason and now they won't come off. So it's going to be a pain in the butt trying to get the rust effects down there, but we'll see how that goes. I recommend you leave them off if you can though, that makes it a lot easier. For the rust effects, I've selected two oil paints. I have the Wilder Colors Dark Red and Fresh Rust. These are very similar, but they're just a little bit different because I want some variation in my natural rust effects. These are also weathering oils because they're actually meant to be used on plastic. So for that reason, as opposed to artist oils, these paints dry a little bit faster and they also dry with a nice matte finish. So if you can get weathering oils, I recommend them. I'm also going to use some wilder enamel thinner to thin these down and also to blend them out. And since people are always asking me about my brushes, today we're going to be using this AK Interactive 3 over 0 round brush to apply the oils. I begin by thinning the oil paints a little bit so they flow nicely and I start with the more red color and I'm applying it to the top of the exhaust shrouds here where I want the rust to kind of begin. Now this looks kind of terrible right now, don't worry I'm just applying it, we're going to blend it in a second. Now I'm applying the orangey color, the rusty color, below that because I want it to kind of fade from more rusty down to yellow. So what you can see here is I'm now starting to blend them out. My brush is very slightly damp with some enamel thinner, which is just oil paint thinner. And I'm doing some vertical streaking motions to blend out the effects because I want them to be not as opaque as they were before. And I also want them to look like they're kind of streaky because rust often forms these nice streaking patterns. That was very straightforward and it looks pretty rusty, but it also looks way too rusty. Exhausts aren't like red rust, they're more of like a dark brownish black, kind of like a, just a more dirty looking rust I guess you could say. So we're going to work on these some more. I have a couple of wilder pigments here that I'm going to use next. The colors I've chosen are brown Russian earth, which is going to be my brownish color to modify the rust effects. And I also have just straight up black here, and this is going to be for the soot effects around the exhaust itself. And for the paintbrush, I have a 1 8 inch angular shader by the Royal and Lang Nickel Zen 73 line. Again, people always ask about my brushes, so I'm being specific here. This is just a basic, small, stiff, short bristled brush. That's a really good brush for blending pigments in my opinion. So I'm simply taking a little bit of pigment on the brush and just kind of stamping it onto the model so it can just stick on there. I guess it kind of probably binds onto the oil paints a little bit because they're probably a little bit sticky. I'm just trying to, like I said before, make it a little more brown. But I don't want to cover the rust completely because I still want that red and orange to show through in some places. I guess you could say I'm using this color to make it less rusty and more dirty. Now here I've changed to the black pigment and I'm applying this around the exhaust themselves because I want them to look kind of sooty. I'm also using a slightly longer brush here. Don't remember which one it is, but it's just to get in there so I can reach further into the shroud and get the black around kind of where it should be down in there. And there we go. We got some nice rust effects on our exhausts and also a little bit of soot as well. I think one of the keys to getting some nice rust effects is to have some variation. That's the reason why I didn't just go in with red for the rust. I used red and also orange and I kind of blend them together into some streaks and variations. 
you can still see that showing through very subtly. When I zoom in here in a second, you can see that there's more reddish areas and more yellowish orange areas. And of course, there's also, there's also the brown on top of that as well. That all combines to give you a nice texture and natural variation to the effect. If you have rust that's one color, it doesn't really look like rust. Rust is always a whole bunch of different colors together. Same thing over here, you can see that we have variation between different reds and browns and also the soot effects really highlight these as well. Might have gone a little overboard with the soot, I might tone it back later, but we'll just see how it looks when I apply the rest of the weather into the tank and see if it all kind of blends together. But for now, we're going to move on to the next rust effect, which is going to be the spare tracks on the tank. The easiest way to weather metal tracks is to use this burnishing or blackening fluid. I have a whole bunch here, and previously when I was weathering my T40, I tried out this Wilder Quick Rust, which is the green stuff. It worked very well, but since I've already given it a try, I want to try something else today. I have the AK stuff, and I also have the VMS stuff. These are both blue. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I want to give these both a try with this tank. So I figured that today, on the spare tracks, we're going to use the AK stuff to see how that works. And then maybe in a couple weeks, once we get onto the actual running tracks, we will then give the VMS stuff a try. And we'll just see how they compare. I'm always interested in trying a different products and seeing kind of what the differences are, what the pros and cons are. So for the AK stuff, I poured it into a little cup here. This is a plastic cup. They said use a glass cup, but I like to live life on the edge. And it didn't burn through or anything, so it's fine. Then I drop the tracks in and they blacken fast. So fast I missed that shot. So I'm gonna show you again here with the other tracks. You just kind of drop them in and I've already used this solution but it still works fine. And then you know you wait like 10 seconds or so and they're already starting to get rusty. This stuff is quick. So I think I left them in there for maybe five minutes or so in a couple of different batches. And I got some variation to it, not exactly sure why, but I mean, it all looks fine. You can see that this section here is very brown. This one here had more orange to it a little bit. And then the other one over here has some orange on one end and then the rest kind of got dark. Like I said, I'm not really sure why they changed so much. Maybe I didn't wipe that one off completely after I took it out, but I mean, it looks all fine. We're gonna work on it a little bit more. So for these tracks here on the front, I want to make some wear to make it look like they've already been used. So I glued some sandpaper to the end of a skewer, and I'm just going to rub over where the wheels would have gone. My goal here is just to make it look like these spare tracks on the front, which are actually being used as armor. I want to make it look like they've already been used, then maybe they took them off like another tiger that was knocked out and put them on the front. And then when these tracks are used, obviously they get worn and don't exactly rust as much over these areas where the wheels are constantly running. So that's why I'm exposing the metal in those areas. Now the other tracks here, the singletons, they go on the side of the tank as spares, I guess, in case they need to change them out. And usually they are actually painted over at the factory. Not always, but usually. So I'm going to take some of the Tamiya dark yellow paint I used to paint the tank in the first place. And I'm going to apply it to the tracks using a sponge. What I'm going to be doing is almost like reverse sponge chipping. So this is a piece of foam sponge that I'm just going to roll up a little bit. And you can see that if I were to apply it, it has a texture which would simulate some chipping. So for that reason, I just get a little bit of paint on it. You know, when you apply paint, you get way too much. So you have to obviously wipe most of it off. Almost think of it like dry brushing. You want like maybe 10% of the paint still on there. And then I begin to just gently touch this against the track. And then you get, I mean, kind of what looks like a chipping or a worn effect. I guess really what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make it look like these tracks were yellow and they've kind of rusted and the paints come off. And when I'm applying the sponge here, it's not really getting in all the little nooks and crannies, which is where this stuff should actually remain because, you know, the paint's going to get worn off the more exposed edges. So for that reason, I have to do a couple of touch-ups with my paintbrush. This is just, like I said, to get it in the final areas where the sponge can't reach. But I'm mostly using the sponge because it gives that nice texture 
I could get that texture with the paintbrush, but it would take a lot more time. Sponge chipping and using a sponge for this is a lot m easier of a way to do it. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking some paint thinner, I think this is lacquer thinner, on my brush and I'm just rubbing back at some places where I want the yellow to be worn. So kind of like the exposed edges and stuff like that. This is just a basic thing I did at the end to be a little more fancy and to touch up the, the, the wear and tear effects on the yellow, I guess you could say. At this point, I think the tracks look excellent. We have the rust from the blackening solution. And we also have that yellow that, that I've applied to some areas to make it look like the tracks have been painted. These ones as well look really nice with that wear pattern. But I think I want to do a little bit more to the texture and color of the rust. So I'm going to take some Wilder Aqualine Brown Rust. This is actually like a gouache, so it takes water, not enamel thinner, to thin it. It's very, very thick in the bottles, you can see. It's also water-based, so it beads up a little bit, but that's fine. I apply a whole bunch of water to it because I want it to be very, very thin. I'm going to be using this to make some speckling effects. Speckling effects are a great way to get nice texture for mud and rust. You simply take a little bit of it on your paintbrush, and you flick at it with your finger, or a, a skewer or something like that, and you can see that it makes some nice, basically, spatter, which can simulate the rusty texture. It's very easy to overdo this effect, but if I were to overdo it, I could just wipe it away with water and restart. For more variation to the rust, I picked a second color. This is orange ochre rust. It's different than the brown rust I did before. And I just did the exact same thing. Thinned it with some water and gently flicked it on with my brush to get some rusty texture. You can also use enamel products for this as well, or even oil paints thinned down. Just need a thinned paint to get some speckles. And there we go. I think that looks much better. I mean, they looked fine before. But as I was saying before with the exhausts, rust looks better when you have more variation. So you can see that we have, of course, still the shiny effect showing through. But now we also have these little speckles of rust, and they could even be like mud or anything. But it looks really, really good. And since I used a couple of different colors, I used the orange and the yellow. Again, there's more variation to the rust, which makes it look a lot more natural. And I mean, this, I think, looks excellent. I haven't done very many... I maybe even haven't done any spare metal tracks before in my life, but I'm pretty happy with how these came out. I'm curious about other techniques as well, so I look forward to seeing how Martin approaches this on his channel Night Shift. I'm going to use some VMS Flexi 5KCA for photo etch parts. Uh, glue, I guess you could say, to attach the metal tracks to the turret. I have been using this stuff recently for photo etch parts, and it worked very well there. So I'm also going to test it out on the metal tracks. On a tiger, there's, there's a little peg at the bottom there, which I had to add to the dragon kit. And then they kind of go underneath these little hangers on the top. So that's where I put the glue at the top there. And just get it in place. In a couple seconds, that CA dries. And it dries very solidly. I think it's really good. It worked well for photo watch, and it works well here as well. And with that, we have completed the rusty effects on our tank. As I was saying at the beginning of the video, I don't do rust very often, and I'm not very confident with my skills there, but I think today I did a pretty good job because this stuff looks excellent. I think my painted over rusty spare tracks on the turret look very nice. I'm happy with how that looks. It actually looks like I wanted it to. On this side, it left the track in the rusty color just to make some variation, make it look like maybe it's been replaced. You know, just some variation always looks cool. And then, of course, the tracks on the front, the track armor, these look awesome because I have the nice wear patterns and I also have the speckling effects as well. That's actually really awesome. Uh, I'm happy with my idea to make them look like they've been worn and used. I think it's also important that my rust effects are not overpowering and they're not, like, too red or anything. They look like they belong on the tank. You can see that the rust I used on the exhausts matches with the rust effects I did on the spare tracks in the rear of the turret. 
it's important to make it look like all the elements of your tank belong together. So I, I do want to do like a red rust everywhere because that wouldn't match nicely with the browns and yellows I already have on the tank. As always, if you have any questions or comments, post them on below. I always read through them all. Once you're done here, I recommend you go check out Martin Kovac's channel Night Shift. He's also weathering his own Tiger one, and today he's going to be doing some rusty effects on that one as well. And as always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Those guys really helped me out making these videos. I'll see you guys next week. Happy mauling.